Hello, this is Jenny at Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have an art demo video for you today, and I will be working with the Mission Inspiration December 2021 prompt. The theme is landscapes, seasonal fantasy, urban city, or calming country. The colors are gray, moss green, and coffee brown. The ingredients are scribbles, texture, metallic, washi tape, and magazine. So let's hop over there and get creating. I will be working from this piece of mixed media paper that is approximately five and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a layer of gel medium so that I can adhere this piece of scrapbook paper or pattern paper to my mix to my art journal page. So this pattern paper is kind of a light mossy green and it has a lot of grungy gray texture to it. So I feel like I'm kind of getting a, a good background for my page. I am going to apply the gel medium with a chip brush that I picked up at my local Dollar Tree. I have trimmed the bristles of the brush down just a bit because they were a bit gangly a little bit too long. But I love the idea of a cheap brush for gel medium because inevitably the brush is going to get glued together. So I am going to go ahead and adhere this art journal page, the mixed media paper, down to my pattern paper and it is a little bit wider and a little bit longer so that I can trim it down to be the perfect size. Once I have the scrapbook paper or the pattern paper glued down I will put a layer of gel medium over the top as well. I want it to be non-porous for some shading and it also kind of helps it stick just a little bit extra. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my heat tool to dry that up or dry that off, dry that out <laughs> to dry it, whatever we're doing here. <laughs> I need the gel medium to be um, completely dry or at least dry to the touch before I move on to my next step so that I don't um, ruin my tools. And it does take kind of a little bit of a minute to dry this and I might be doing a little bit of over overkill, but who knows. I do need to go ahead and trim this paper off. I could have used my paper trimmer or my guillotine trimmer, but the scissors were on my desk and they're just as handy just as easy. And I'm just trimming right up there next to the edge of the mixed media paper so that it fits right into the binder I have for my art journal pages for this year. Now after I had trimmed it down there was a little bit of uh, gel medium still kind of oozing out the side so I decided to go ahead and give it another little bit of a, a dry time. Okay for the next step I am going to take this archival ink it's in the color of watering can and ink up the edges. So when this piece of paper was a full 12 by 12 inch piece of paper, there was kind of some gray grunge all along the four edges. But cutting it down, I have cut some of that off. So I'm going to go ahead and add that gray back around all four sides of my page. I'll pull it into the center just a tad, not a lot, just enough to kind of add the gray, grunge it up, and that kind of stuff. So I've got my green and I've got my gray. I'm going to move on to adding texture with the coffee color. And in order to do that, I will be using some texture paste, some acrylic paint, and a stencil. So the stencil I will be using is one I purchased from Honeybee Stamps quite some time ago, and it has some arrows on it. And I've kind of put a piece of paper behind it to see if you could see it better a little bit. Um, I am going to have those arrows pointing horizontally and I'm using this Crafters Workshop fluffy texture paste. My old bottle of texture paste was just finally too hard to continue to use. I had to throw it away. I will be tinting this texture paste with the Scattered Twigs um, Distress Paint. It is an acrylic paint and it will kind of um, thin out that texture paste just a bit but not, not enough that it will be a problem. I haven't, I haven't had any problem um, coloring this texture paste even though it is not quite as stiff as the liquid text texture paste I was using before but it's worked just fine now I don't drink coffee I kind of assume this is the color of coffee once you've added some milk or something to it <laughs> we're going with it it's the color I imagined <laughs> I am just going to throw some of that texture paste down in a couple of places on my page I don't want to completely cover the page I do want to kind of be observant of um, patterns of three and using um, three different spots on my art journal page just as kind of a 
a balancing act. I don't know. That's just something that I kind of think looks the nicest. I imagine there's rules that go with that, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> okay, so we have all three of our colors. We have the gray, the green, and the brown. We have the texture with the texture paste. And the next thing I'm going to do is add the magazine fragment. So earlier this year, when I was going through magazines, I for a different project entirely, I found this picture and I love it. And it was an ad for like a tourism or, or maybe the state of Wyoming and Yellowstone National Park. I can't remember, but I loved it. So I kept it because I knew one day I would make an art journal with this page and voila, I am using this picture right here as my focal point. So it has kind of that the outline shape of the buffalo head, but it also has in the picture some landscape. So hello, double win, focal point and ingredient. I am going to go ahead and put some gel medium on the back of my magazine piece. It is a little bit thin paper. So I will also put some gel medium on top of my art journal page, just so that I can slide it around if I need to without risking tearing it because I don't have a lot of wiggle room. It is like almost exactly the size of my art journal page. It just fits perfectly. I am going to go ahead and add a layer of gel medium over the top of that just to glue it down and also to make it non-porous. Again, I'm going to be adding some shading to kind of help it pop off the page there a bit. I love this picture from the first time I saw it. I wish I had thought to find the photographer or I didn't tear that part of the magazine out, but it is beautiful. And I absolutely love it. Whoever created this did a fabulous job. I just love, love, love it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now that I have that gel medium down, I am going to go ahead and pull my heat tool out and dry that. I need it to be nice and dry so that I can add some shading with my pit pen. So I have a somewhat dry baby wipe off to the top right hand side. And I am just going to go around the edge of this cutout with the pit pen and smear it out with a damp finger. So pit pens are made by Faber-Castell and I don't think they make this style of barrel anymore, but they are an India ink pen. And for just a few seconds on a non-porous surface, India ink is smearable. And that's what's allowing me to add a bit of a shadow to my image here. I know that Faber-Castell makes a more narrow barrel of the same pen, the same ink, and they're more widely available than, I don't think you can even find these pit pens anymore. The big, they're called the big brush pen. I don't think you can even find those anymore, but there are other pens with the same ink that have the same properties. Once this ink is dry, even on a non-porous surface, it is completely waterproof. It is permanent. It will not be budged, but for just a couple of seconds, I can smear it out and kind of just use it to create that shadow. And it's one of my favorite things about these pit pens is that they're permanent when they're done, but for a minute and a half, well, okay, for a couple seconds, I can smear them around. So going down our checklist, we have all of our colors. We now have our theme in there as well with the landscapes, the country, cozy country. We have texture, we have magazine, and now I'm going to start working on the metallic and the washi tape. So my metallic element is going to be added in as kind of a background for these Tim Holtz um, chit chat stickers, which is kind of acting as a washi tape as well. And I have picked out a quote and I can't remember what the quote says. <laughs> and I already put the art journal page away before I did the voiceover. Sorry. It says something about taking time for it and finding adventures and stuff. <laughs> I know I should have remembered to pull that out while I was before I started the voiceover. The first thing I need to do though, is decide where I want to put this quote because I'm going to be backing it with this gold washi tape from Alta new. I think the thing about this washi tape is though, it doesn't stick very long. It, it does. It's very low tack and it doesn't have a very sticky, um, adhesive on the back. So I am going to tear a piece of the washi tape off and just kind of put it down here on my work surface for a minute. And then I'm going to adhere that quote phrase 
to the top of the washi tape. And once I have that um, smashed down, I'm going to turn it over, the whole washi tape strip over, and add some liquid glue to the back of it so that when I put it down on my art journal page, it becomes more permanent. So hold on a second. I am going to pull out my art journal page and read you what that quote actually says. If I can find it. Okay. It says, travel the world over to find the beautiful. And I thought it was perfect for this, this landscape scene with the buffalo and, and the white open plains of Yellowstone. And I don't know if you have ever seen any of these buffalo, but they are huge. Um, my mom's parents, when I was a kid, had a dairy farm. And I thought those Holstein cows were big. These buffalo put those Holstein cows to shame. They are huge, 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 huge. Okay. So here is my art journal page with the sentiment and the washi tape down. And I decided that as I'm including the scribble ingredient, I'm going to also do that with some, with a gold metallic Sharpie paint pen. Paint pen. Well, I did not expect that to be the tongue twister of the day. I am just adding kind of a scribbly border around the edges um, just kind of to pull your eye inward, focus on the center of the page there. It's not a very dark border. It is quite subtle, but it also is metallic. So it goes along with that washi tape underneath my quote. So it kind of pulls things together just a little bit. And that, a little bit more bling never hurt anybody, right? Just ask Liberace. He had all the bling in the world. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and punch the holes into my art journal page so that I can put it into my binder. And I am doing this before I glue my recipe card onto the back so that I don't have yet another layer to punch through. My punch is getting a little bit worn out and probably needs to be replaced. I will go ahead and use my tape gun, my ATG tape runner, to add some double-sided tape to the back of my recipe card or my my prompt card and just tape that to the back of my page so that when I'm flipping through my art journal later on, I will remember why I did what I did when I created this page. The only thing left to do now is to flip that over and sign and date it. And it is all complete. You guys, I did all 12 mission inspiration prompts this year. This is the first year I have finished all 12. <laughs> Maybe next year I will add the, the mini missions in as well. Who knows? Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I hope you enjoyed the process. Here's a couple of close-up videos of the page for you. Um, I appreciate you continuing to watch my videos. I have a couple of videos um, here for you to watch and a subscribe button. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did. And I would love it if you would share it with your friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. Have a really fabulous day.